how do we reach that audience? How do we reach people contextually relevant to how they're behaving in digital? The only way that makes sense to me is through story and testimony. Right? We have the greatest story ever told. Death to life transformation. Death to life transformation. Right? And we have it on repeat because God is always at work. He's always active. He's always transforming life. There are infinite number of stories that we could tell to testify of his great love and his redemptive work. I had a conversation yesterday with a guy uh, by the name of Dr. John Jackson. He's the president of Jessup University in California. And we were talking about media and the future of uh, higher education and how digital is impacting that. And one of the things that he said was that um, we've come from a culture who that believed in absolute truth. More recently, we moved to a culture that believes in or functions in relative truth. And now we are living in a world and a culture where everything is the worldview, especially of millennials and Gen Z, tends to be uh, experiential truth. And we're talking about how do you reach an audience um, and, and a world who needs Jesus with literacy-based communication, right? Like this is a ever increasingly orality or oral tradition world or oral tradition culture or story centric culture. Um, and we're trying to reach that culture with literacy-based communication. We're trying to reach that culture with logic and reason. Um, and that culture is functioning more and more and more, especially in the West, in a orality or story centric culture communication model. Um, and so, man, if, if the worldview of the generation, um, especially my generation and younger, is that they're functioning in this is experiential truth, what is, uh, what is my truth is my truth and what's your truth is your truth. Um, and your truth and my truth, we can have our own truth and and it doesn't matter. We don't have to argue about things be tr because not only is truth relative, it's experiential. Um, how does the church reach that world? That's a, that's a big question I've been thinking about and pondering. And um, as an, a, a ministry that is interested and passionate about storytelling and testimony, um, in my mind, that is the only way to reach that culture. That's the only way to engage with that culture that is, um, again, more and more functioning in orality or story-centric um, cultural communication. And I don't know what this actually looks like. I don't have the answers, um, but it's something that we need to consider, right? This is, there is a shift because of digital, because of the the globalization that we're experiencing, um, primarily and, and um, first and foremost, I think due to digital, um, especially in the West, we're seeing this shift towards orality and story-centric communication, right? It, it's no wonder that um, The Chosen, if you've seen that the third season and the documentary that followed um, and how they're seeing Gen Z relate to The Chosen and the story uh, of Jesus through really good media for maybe the first time in church history outside of the Passion of the Christ, right? Like, how do we, you're, you're seeing this, you're seeing story engaged with that generation really, really well. Why is that, right? That generation, my generation and younger have grown up scrolling through tech platforms that are iconography, photo and video, primarily video, especially lately, right? All the major platforms are pushing more and more into video. What is that? That, that is story and narrative communication, right? That's what they're growing up in. Uh, I saw a quote recently that said, by 2024, next year, 64% of kids coming out of eighth grade public education are going to be illiterate in some way, shape or form. 22% of them are going to be completely illiterate. Why is that? That's a question we need to ask. How do we, one, how do we reach an illiterate world, right? How do we reach an illiterate culture? 
Um, they are functioning in our orality, story-centric cultural behaviors uh, because they're spending eight hours a day in the digital space. Like it or not, that is the reality. And so if we're to model Jesus and meet people where, they're, where they are, if we're to model his behaviors and, and meeting people in their brokenness and in their depravity and in um, meet them where they're at and call them out into something greater, right? it's not going to be if they are functioning, functioning in orality or story-centric cultural communication, it's, we're never going to reach them li with literacy-based communication. We're never going to reach them with our logic and our reasoning and our apologetics. Uh, those are all good things. I'm not saying that we stop doing those things. I'm not saying that we stop um, creating content in those ways. Uh, but we have to be contextually relevant to how people behave in the digital space. And the only way to do that is through story. The only way to do that is through testimony. And so I just wanted to share this idea right like can we have a conversation can we can church can we start thinking through um how do we begin being functional and relevant in digital um it's it's a question that we have to ask because we are we are using post enlightenment literacy based uh, logic reasoning um arguments to try to reach an orality and story centric world. And it's just not going to work. Uh, I have been recently reading this book called leading with story by a guy named Rick Sessoms. It's an incredible book. He runs a ministry called freedom to lead. And I found out about him when we were doing some research for a course that we have on our site called why story. And the quote that I, that I saw uh, by Rick said 70% of the world functions in orality or story-centric cultural communication. And yet 90% of the missions world is trying to reach a story-centric, a primarily story-centric or orality world with literacy-based means. Um, it's just not effective, right? We have to communicate with story first. We have to communicate with testimony. Um, we have to engage emotionally, right? In order to to prepare somebody to receive the gospel, they have to be emotionally engaged first. Um, in Matthew 13, 13, Jesus talks about this. The disciples ask him, why do you give so many parables and why do you tell so many stories? And he, his response is basically, I tell stories to prepare people to receive my insights and my gospels um, the, to receive the gospel. We see this modeled um, and shown in the woman at the well and the man possessed by demon legion, right? These are individuals who have had an afternoon experience with the Messiah. They're not educated. They're not seminary trained. All they know is this man's name is Jesus. He is the Messiah, I'm pretty sure. And he told me in the case of the woman at the well, he told me everything I ever did. In the case of the man possessed by demon legion, that man says, I want to follow you the rest of my life. I want to be your disciple. And Jesus says, no, I need you to go and testify of what you've seen here today. Right? And so in both those cases, the woman at the well and the man possessed by demon legion, they go to their communities. They testify of what they had experienced, of that transformational work Christ had done in their heart and then in their lives. And in the next, the next time in both cases that we see the the, the disciples and Jesus come through those communities. Um, in the case of the woman at the well, there's 4,000 people ready to receive the gospel. In the case of the man possessed by demon legion, the next time Jesus and the disciples come through that community or that region, it's the feeding of the 4,000, right? 12 to 15,000 people with men, women, and children ready to receive the gospel because of one man's testimony. That's significant. We need to take note of that. We need to take notice of that. Um, and in order to reach an orality, story-centric culture, we have to start with story. We have to start with testament. We have to lead with those things. I'm never going to argue against our sermons and our Bible training and our education and knowledge, tra knowledge transfer. I'm never going to argue against our felt needs articles and all of those pieces. But we're leading with that. And we're engaging, we're, we're trying to engage with a world that doesn't care. They're not looking for that stuff in digital, right? That's not a 
broad statement, sometimes they are. But for the most case, by and large, an unreached and unengaged world is playing and in, in behaving in the digital space. Um, they're going to those places to be entertained, to veg, to check out, right? And so if I'm going to, and, and, and so why are the most successful brands in those places successful? Well, they're entertaining. They're using story and narrative. They're being contextually relevant to how people behave in digital. How do we reach that audience? How do we reach people contextually relevant to how they're behaving in digital? The only way that makes sense to me is through story and testimony. We have the greatest story ever told. Death to life transformation. Death to life transformation, right? And we have it on repeat because God is always at work He's always active. He's always transforming life. There are infinite number of stories that we could tell to testify of his great love and his redemptive work. Our content strategies, our annual content strategies that we're trying to figure out, that we're trying to build out for our year are solved. It's just a matter of documenting what God is doing. I just wanted to share that and and give my thoughts. Can we, this is a call to the church to say, Can we shift our mindset to start thinking differently about how we behave in the digital world? Can we shift our mindset to say, hey, we're going to continue all the content production we're doing around our sermons and our podcasts and our knowledge transfer and our um, biblical training and our felt needs articles. None of those things are bad, but they're landing flat because we're not engaging with story first. We are not using testimony to our advantage, the most powerful tool at engaging culture, right? And so is there, are there ministries out there that are interested in saying, Hey, we'd like to play in that space. Again, I don't have the answers. I don't know what really, what this looks like. We have a lot of ideas. We have, um, a lot of exciting things that we're going to try to do, but, uh, I just want to invite the church to start thinking differently. Can we think differently about we, how we approach digital? Can we think differently about how we engage with an unreached and unengaged world in the digital space? Um, because this is the greatest shift that we are living through in, in communication in human history. This is the new printing press. We have to figure out how to use this tool to reach the unreached and unengaged. Otherwise, we'll continue to be irrelevant and dysfunctional in that space.